My birth mother was taken by her father three times for an illegal abortion. The first two times uh, she basically chickened out and the third time um, she was going to go through with it and something inside her just screamed no and she was prepped on the table. She ended up kicking the abortionist and escaped uh, from this back alley abortion clinic because this was before Roe versus Wade so this was all illegal. Uh, after that um, the brother was told to take her out to the woods and basically beat her into having a miscarriage which he would not do and then they tried poisoning her with quinine uh, to try to get her to miscarry and that didn't work so eventually the decision was made still pretty early on in the pregnancy they uh, this was in Tennessee and they sent her to Chicago to Catholic Charities to a um, unwed mother's home St. Vincent's where she spent her pregnancy there gave birth to me and then signed me over and I was adopted five weeks later you know, my birth mother was obviously a young girl in crisis, was completely incapable of taking care of a child. Uh, Jim's mother, who was raped uh, and carried him, and she was, she was older, she was 36. So she concealed the pregnancy as long as she could and hid it, um, and was able to get to Catholic Charities and have him. So we're two kids who may have been conceived and born out of crisis, but we're certainly not any less loved, any less wanted, we both had amazing adoptive parents who so desperately wanted children who couldn't have children of their own. Our parents actually had very similar stories, could not have their own kids. And we were the biggest blessings that, and the biggest answer to their prayers is to have a family when nature wouldn't provide one. And so for those of us who are, or society may call the unwanted, I think every adoptive parent out there would negate that argument and argue against it and say, no, these children are loved and wanted and are every bit as valued, you know, regardless of conception, regardless of your humble beginnings. You know, you are who you are based on the character of who you are, not necessarily the moment of your creation. Being an adopted person, you start to imagine perhaps your story and you think of two special people who were in a crisis, they were faced with a tough decision, but they were in love and they just wanted to do the right thing. You hoped you were formed from an act of love. Uh, I was even prepared to accept the fact that maybe this was just a fleeting love. Um, but what I did find out was something a lot different. Um, being adopted, I was curious about my history I petitioned Catholic Charities to get my background information and I eagerly anticipated that letter coming back and finding out about my history. And when that letter arrived, very plain, simple letter, little did I know I might as well have been holding a hand grenade in my hand with a, with a pulled pin. Uh, I opened the letter, found a nice description of my mother on the first page. As I went to the next page, there were six words that just jumped out and that hand grenade exploded. And the words were, she said she was sexually assaulted. As a rape-conceived person, I take this very personally, and I take the, the exceptions included in law very personally, because back in 1958, had someone been proposing laws with rape exceptions that would have targeted me directly. So we as rape-conceived individuals are here to speak for the people who are targeted today. And to be consistent with uh, true pro-life philosophy, we're here to speak for the people who can't speak for themselves, for those pre-born, those rape-conceived babies about to be born who need protection. Another part of the stigma comes from the pro-abortion argument. We are exhibit A on their list of unwanted lives, the rape and incest conceived people. There is another uh, stigma that comes from the constant pressure to put that exception into law. There is a little bit of stigma that comes from the pro-life side, people who claim that they're pro-life but are comfortable with the rape exception. Uh, even Sean Hannity recently called rape-conceived people the evil seed. He just couldn't get his head around you know, letting go of, 
of, of that exception. You know, there, there are people that claim they're pro-life who just can't get past this conceptual blockage that they have, uh, that, that we are like real human beings <laughs> or that we have value. We are here and we have a purpose. People call us the rapist baby, but we aren't the rapist baby. We're the, we are children of God. And God wants life. I'm so thankful uh, to my mother, certainly thankful for her courage, but I'm thankful that I'm here to honor God with my life to the best of my ability. And through Wendy and you know the love that we share to continue life with three with a great family, three wonderful sons, and what a blessing they are. And it shows that out of tragedy or out of difficult circumstances, life blossoms.